Hello, Creative Frugal Wonder Woman, and welcome to our Wonders of Watercolor Club for March 2021. You guys, are you having fun yet with these watercolors? I am loving them. I'm having so much fun, and I created this month, I generally only do two samples for you guys, but this month we're using the Early Tulips Bouquet from um, Picket Fence Studios and I had so much fun with it that I couldn't stop making cards. I mean after all tulips come in a variety of colors and so it was just so much fun to use and just keep going and to just keep making more beautiful bouquets. So this month I went ahead and we're going to use vintage pastels on our instructions. However, I don't want you guys to feel like every month I'm going to switch it up and we're going to use a different um, palette and it's going to cost you, you know, $30 for a new palette every month. I don't want that. So that's another reason why I did all the different um, samples. If you only have the Woodland set and um, from last month that we used and you are not ready to buy another set, then here is a card which was actually this one and I will I know that my pictures are not coming out real great I have a new photo box coming so hopefully my pictures will be better um, but you could do use the woodland set let me show you here whoops to make the same card using the same techniques that we're going to do today and I just used the Foxberry, which is number 88, um, for the main part. And then I used Pond and Deep Moss for the leaves. So this, this, this stamp is so versatile. Um, I think this is why I had so much fun with it this month. Um, that you could just use whatever you have, okay? So what we're going to focus on is the technique in how we um, came up with this beautiful card. So let's get started. You can pull out your hand stamped image that came in your kit. And again, if you're using the vintage pastels, um, I really like the set. I did use this one on the bunny card too, I think was our other option there. But this is going to, um, this was, uh, let's see, I used different colors for the bases because tulips are just so beautiful in the varieties that we can do that with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick two stand, or two tulips. In this case, I did um, these two and these two and these two in different base colors, okay? So we can go ahead and start. Um, by picking two tulips and wetting them. Make sure I'm getting some water down into my brush. And so I'm just going to wet the tulip. And so we're just getting that water nice and wet. And then we're going to go into our number 116, which is soft to lilac, and grab some ink there and come in. And you can squeeze and add a little bit more water in there. And we're just creating that base color, okay? So are you guys using these watercolor pens? Are you getting the hang of them? Um, squeezing. Can you kind of see I'm using my thumb there to squeeze some water and it doesn't come out a ton, just enough to get us what we need. And I'm really finding, you know, there is no right or wrong in watercoloring. You can get a very wide um, a variety of look with the watercolor depending on how much water you actually add to your project. So play with that. 
Um, get your, I hope you guys have got some watercolor paper and you're starting to practice either with um, Catherine Pooler's Midnight Ink or Archival Ink works really well. Um, oh, I forgot my heat gun. I will be right back. Okay, um, got my heat gun. So we don't need it a whole lot in this. It's going to dry fairly quickly, but again, it depends on how much water you've added to your project. So um, let's go on to the next one. These tulips are not touching the first two that I did, so we're good to go ahead and add our water to prepare our paper for the color. I notice if you, you know, depending on how much water you're putting on your paper will determine on how much your ink um, spreads and how um, condensed the color is. So this one, I went ahead and I picked up some dus Dusky Mauve. It's just a weird name for a color, Dusky. And we're going to bring that color in to the whole base. And again, when I go down onto my palette here, my little, um, I forget what they call those, but the paint, I'm squeezing and just getting just a little bit of water. And depending on the brand of pens that you bought or you're using, will depend on how much you have to squeeze. So uh, I've noticed that some work way better than others. Okay, so now we've got our base on those two. I'm going to clean off our brush. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this little one because it's not touching anything. And for this third one, we're using the um, 109, the Periwinkle. Come in with a little bit of color and get our base down. Okay, but before we go into this um, tulip here, I want to go ahead and heat set this a little bit because this is still kind of wet, um, wet. and I don't want it my colors to run. I really want to keep the two colors separate. Okay, so it doesn't take much. Now we can go ahead and wet this paper for this tulip. There we go. Again, I'm just squeezing a little bit as I'm going. And this will become more natural to you the more you use them. So again, we're bringing in some color, 109, the periwinkle, and we're going to color the base and just get a nice little kind of a blue, purple, more on the blue line, but it makes for a beautiful tulip. This, doing this card, it was so funny. Um, it really made me want to buy some tulip bulbs, you guys. Um, but I think you have to plant those in the fall, don't you? I really wish I could do Facebook Live or YouTube Live so that I could not be sitting here talking to myself and waiting for you guys to answer me at some point um, later after you've watched the video. But uh, our internet just does not allow for that. So I apologize. Maybe someday I will be able to do lives and um, we'll have better internet. But until then, I'll just have to wait and in my mind, I'll imagine that you guys are actually answering me. <laughs> okay, so we've went ahead, we've heat set the whole thing, now we're back to dry. And now we're going to come back with the 116, which is the soft lilac, and we're going to hit those low lights, okay, and add some color. Now this is really where, depending on how much water you've added to your brush and to your um, color is going to make all the difference and every time you do this it's going to look different so let's go ahead if you've got a lot of ink on to your palette you can use that 
or you can go ahead and just grab some more. Again, I'm squeezing to get some water there and I'm going to just come in. Oh, I just love this and add that color into these low areas and I'm using see I'm just using the same color on all six and the because the base colors are different it's going to bring out different colors so they're all going to look different that's going to be fun so I'm just using um, the stamp itself and the little marks that they made um, this is just a great great stamp to use for watercolor and I want to create the highlights and again it's gonna look totally different depending on how much water you've added so you can go back over if your lines are maybe too harsh that you don't care for them um, I, I really I was so intimidated at first with watercolor because I'm like, oh, but they're very forgiving, I'm finding. And um, you can really manipulate the color. Even if you've put color down and you don't like it, clear your brush. Now let me show you. You can just clear your brush and it's dry. Don't squeeze and add any more water. And then you can actually like soak up the color see there see how I'm just lifting up and getting that color back off there isn't that something so again I'm squeezing water in and I actually like the purple in there so I'm gonna come back and do it but it's just oh fun 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 um and this one is the purple you can see over here we had the base but because we're coming in with the second layer you're able to still get those low lights and add some dimension into and i'm just kind of tap tapping a little adding some water as i see fit sometimes dragging again very forgiving there is no right or wrong it's going to give you a different look and the more you practice the more you're going to discover what look you like best I mean I actually figured out that you can make these watercolors you can make a stamp image look like um, Copics just about I'm going to add a little bit of water so it was kind of a little bit too much now all right so I'm squeezing to add just water no color just a little bit of and you can, if you wanted to bring in more of the blue, you could come back with more of the blue even. I mean, like I said, no right or wrong to this. Okay, so let's go ahead and dry this up so we can go on to the leaves. might take a little bit more because we've got a couple layers now of ink on there and see how by adding the water that really made the it's just amazing it's like two different looks and if you wanted so now I like how this one has a different look of this one so let's do this let's go ahead and add you can see I squeezed a bunch of water in there let's add some water back to this
and I'm going to come back in with, um, let's see, this was a dusty mauve. And we're going to add some color. And what that's going to do, it's very, very wet. It's going to harshen those, or I'm sorry, it's going to soften those harsh lines that we have. Watch this. Oh. All right, so let's not heat set that because see, I add a lot of water here. We want to take that because otherwise I'm going to just blow it all over and I don't want to do that. Want it to be not quite that wet when I get the heat gun on it. There, that's better. That heat gun would have blown that water and splattered it into the rest of my image, which I could have fixed it, but that's not what I wanted. It's not the look I wanted. So I hope you can tell the difference now. Let me see if I can get this. See how we've really blended the two colors, the blue or the periwinkle and the lilac together, and here the dusky mauve and the lilac together and see how it's not, there's a harsh line there. So both are okay. It just totally depends on the look that you want. So now that we've done these two, let's change up and go ahead and do the other two so that this image all looks cohesive and the same. So I'm adding some water. I wanna go ahead and come into my color Same with this, I'm adding quite a bit of water here. Mm, I got a lot of ink on that. Mm, apologize for not getting rid of my little for not silencing my phone, my watch today. See now I think this is a little dark, so I cleaned off my brush and I'm just going to soak up some of that color. Because I want some highlights in there. I don't want to totally lose the image. Try that, see how it looks. You really want to be careful not to do too much water or dry in between because otherwise your paper, even though you're using watercolor paper, your paper could start pilling and you don't want that. You don't want to lose your image. So for this one, I'm adding some water. I'm just put, squeezing my brush, adding some water to soften these edges. I'm just going to leave that one alone. All right, but we're going to go ahead and Picked that with the gun and uh, get it dry. So now we've got the tulips done. I like the way they look. Let's leave them, get them nice and dry, and we'll go on now to the leaves and stems. So now we've cleaned off so we don't have any purples or blues in our brush, and we're going to just squeeze some water and wet our leaves. Sometimes it's hard to see the water. <gasps> Oops. And then it came out. I'll just dot that off. There we go. And then for this one, I started with the Breezy 115. And it's pretty light. Again, we're using the vintage pastels, so these colors are all pretty light. Obviously, these are just suggestions. 
If you have the woodlands and you wanted to try and bring in a darker green, you could. I think that would look nice and be okay. You want to try not to get too far off the different hues, so that's why it is nice that they make these color palettes. Um, I mean, there's 12 colors, and you know that these are all going to coordinate with each other. When you start bringing in another um, confection set, you might find that it doesn't complement very well. So. All right, so we're just adding a little water, come back in, adding water to our palette here, getting some color, and come back in. Some of these are small. I've got a lot of color and water on my brush right now, so I'm going to go ahead and do these stems. And... Now I can go ahead and wet this. It's going to bring some color. That's okay, but mostly I'm just doing this to bring my, to wet my paper. I had so much water on my brush. No sense in getting rid of wasting. We're the frugal Wonder Woman, right? So no sense in wasting that color. Um, when you've got, when you're using the same color, it's okay um, to use that on to when you're just wetting your paper, your image. Is that making sense, you guys? All right, but I do want to add a little bit more color, so I'll come back in. Same thing with this. I'll add a little color here. I'm going to get a nice base. Remember, these are going to get a little bit lighter in um, color when you dry them. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and get that um, breezy color out of our brush. But we're going to go ahead, before we dry this, we're going to go ahead because we want it to kind of have the same look that we had on the tulips. So add some water into your brush. And we're going to come into the 110 Sage. And we're going to follow those lines on our stamped image. And that's going to bring that color in, give it a real watercolor look. And when that dries, it's going to be so cool. Oh, I forgot that stamped image on there that end of the leaf so I'm leaving some of the breezy color to come through oops I don't know why I wiped that off um, and then coming on top with the sage but I want some of that to come that other color to come through all right so we need to come back in here I did wipe off my brush because I want to start with the breezy. So I'm going to wet it, come in with breezy. Clean it off. Grab the sage color. I'm squeezing a little bit of ink, it's kind of dry. It's too dry. Add a little bit more water. There. Now we can clean that off. Go ahead and dry it. And again, you don't have to have a heat gun. If you want to just let it air dry in between, you can. Sometimes the um, watercolors will give a little bit of an opaque look to the stamped image itself. So if you wanted and you had the stamp and you had a misty, you could put your image back in 
and stamp it again and then you would have the black would really pop in the color so you would have all those black lines back which would be nice too but look at there you guys isn't that beautiful so again there is absolutely no right or wrong way to do your watercolors um i hope you're having fun with them i hope you're just really learning how the feel of your brushes whether you're using just a cup of water and a paintbrush or one of these um, water brushes they're just so nice i love having the water right there um, and the control of being able to add or take away whatever color or water that i need to so again you have your instructions um, you have your idea sheet so that you can see the different some other colors that i chose with different palettes oh my goodness i apologize um this one i'm gonna try and get it up here and get better color there we go can you see on the flowers themselves not very well i added a shimmer so i fussy cut this one with my little scissors and um it was just so much fun before i so before i mounted it with foaming tape onto the base i spritzed it with my shimmer spray so that really made it um just added a little bit of shimmer um, and really stepped this card up the next one was with the woodlands again so if you only have the woodland set that we used last month um here was a beautiful card using those um again as we talked about earlier in this in the um video and then for this one i had gotten another set because now i am totally obsessed with these watercolors i went ahead and i got the tropicals you guys look at these fun colors aren't they gorgeous and look at that um, again, I used my shimmer spray on this one, so I did it on the whole card this time, and I just love that. Let's see if I can, a little bit, not really. I'm really hoping, I get it, um, I've ordered a new photo box, so I'm hoping to get some better pictures for you guys to put up on my website. I've got a gallery started, um, and so I hope you enjoy that. I also have a new program coming out. Um, if, all, I'll, if all goes well, it will be March 1st. So look forward um, to everything that's coming on the Creative Frugal Wonder Woman page on the Facebook, or you can just go to www.janmckee.com and see the changes there and what's coming up here is our newsletter this tells you um, the stamped a link to get this stamp if you would like it unfortunately there is no die cut for this whoops from um picket fence studios however like i said i was able to fussy cut it um, with my little just my scissors and it wasn't bad at all um, it really was a nice easy fairly easy stamp to cut out even though you don't have the die so lots of versatility to this stamp oh it comes with 12 um sayings all kinds just beautiful um feeling better prayers for you um know that i care thinking of you so lots of great sayings but you could also i'm sure you have a birthday or an anniversary or an easter stamp somewhere that you could add to this which just makes it i mean that much more um, versatile so I hope you enjoyed this month's watercolor club and I can't wait to see your creations and uh, I hope you have a blessed month um, April's coming and we are just a heads up I am going to be using the tropicals on next month so if that is something if you like those um, I highly encourage you to purchase that set um, they're just vibrant and fun and we're going to be using that a lot especially with spring and summer coming so um, and you can get those through a cherry on top um, sometimes hobby lobby has them 
I have seen them through Michael's, but not available in the store, only online. And um, again, I hope you have a very blessed day. And I thank you for using my links that I offer. And um, thank you for supporting us. Have a blessed day. Bye.